This video shows the filter and fluid replacement on the 10-speed 10L80 GM transmission with the RPO code of MQB. You can scan this QR code and uh, if you have MQB as one of the RPO codes, re re regular production options, you know that you're working on the 10L80 transmission. You want to do this cold because that exhaust pipe could be really hot, so let this cool down completely before doing the service. Uh, you're going to need to drop the, the Y pipe on this in order to get clearance to get the filter out. I kind of cleaned up the area with a little bit of water, dried it off, got ready for it, readied myself with anticipated parts, a couple of gaskets for the exhaust, <clears throat> and then a filter and a pan gasket. So I'm going to start by lowering the exhaust. To do that, I'm gaining better access to the area by removing the inner fender liner on both sides. Got a couple of screws and a couple of body clips. And I'm going to pull out this oxygen sensor. And I'm going to remove this heat shield for better access. <clears throat> Just one little 10 millimeter head bolt there. And then a 7 8 oxygen sensor socket. I did not disconnect the harness. I just rotated it out and uh, and then tuck it out of this way. And then I'm also breaking the back one free, the downstream oxygen sensor on the right hand bank uh, with the crow's foot 7 8 And then um, taking it out completely as well. And then this is showing the left hand side, driver's side, same process. Remove the heat shield, <laughs> remove the oxygen sensors. And that kind of twists the harness, but. Uh, it's, it's easier than disconnecting them in my opinion. The downstream one on this left hand bank uh, found easier from the bottom side with a regular uh, oxygen sensor socket. And then I'm hitting the uh, exhaust manifold bolts with some penetrating oil because uh, exhaust bolts can really be a pain in the neck and can break easily and be rough going out. So I broke that one free on that right hand side and then I was able to get on it with a socket and extension and I was able to do that on all um, on the left hand bank as well I was able to get on the rest of the bolts with uh, a socket and extension and an impact driver which made it a lot easier and then lowering the white pipe as far as it'll go down it rests on the cross member there so now we have access to the pan and we'll be able to lower it enough to remove it and to get the filter out before I do that, I'm going to extract a little bit of fluid. I didn't end up getting as much out of it as I anticipated, but I'm taking out the, the fill plug here with an 8 millimeter hex. Um, and it's kind of tight going out the whole way because it has a little bit of thread locker on it. And so um, it didn't just spin out easy by hand. I ended up putting a 8 millimeter hex bit socket on it and an 8 millimeter ratcheting end wrench to zing it out a little quicker. And then uh, got a fluid extractor, sucked out as much fluid as I could, uh, was patient enough for actually. I did quite a bit, but then there was still quite a bit left in the pan, and it was difficult to, with the clearance through that drain hole, to, to get the suction tube in there completely all the way to the bottom. So remove all the pan bolts, take out the pan. This gasket's a very high quality gasket. You could definitely get away with reusing it. I went ahead and replaced it since it's a pain to uh, get that pan off with dropping the exhaust. Uh, so I just put a new one on. And then there's two e-torques, e external torques. You got kind of have a specialty torque socket for to get out those two disposable uh, filter bolts. Um, they are disposable. I didn't have them pre-purchased. Uh, I can't really, I didn't really find them searching online, so that would be a dealer item to buy before you go do this. But the the torque on them is so light, 44 inch pounds. It's not like they're they're stretch or torque to yield bolts uh, necessarily, in my opinion. So I I was comfortable reusing them. Cleaning up the pan, getting it ready for the new gasket. I do have part and tool links in the video description. And then setting the new gasket. And then cleaning up the surface of the transmission itself a little bit. And then put that in place. Get a few bolts started. And then put these in by hand so you don't accidentally over torque anything. And these each call for 80 inch pounds. And there is a tightening sequence that you follow for 
for doing that and then make a final sweep all the way around make sure that they're all good and set to 80 inch pounds using a little bit of brake clean which is flammable again this is I'm not working with anything hot here or not very not necessarily flammable but the vapors can be harmful and then uh, 8.1 quarts of ultra low viscosity ATF from Dexron is what it calls for. I put in nine quarts in my bucket pump because it doesn't suck up um, the full nine quarts. There'll probably be a half quart left in or a little less in the bottom of the bucket when I pump it in here. I refreshed the threads on the drain bolt, but that wasn't really necessary or effective rather because that comes in and out quite a few times in this process of checking the the fluid and running the vehicle. Um, also, if you're going to put in the full 8.1 quarts without the vehicle running, it's obviously going to be overfilled um, as you're pumping it in. So I used some uh, electrical tape there and made kind of a seal that I could press against it with the bucket pump, and uh, and then I put in the eight and a half, 8.1 quarts or so, and uh, put the drain plug back in. I wouldn't necessarily go to tightening it up all the way at this point and then reassembling of everything so that you can start it up and check the final fluid level replacing my exhaust gaskets while I'm at it I had them I purchased them you don't know if they're going to be damaged or not or uh, be effective going back on they're inexpensive so I went ahead and purchased new ones and replaced them at the same time although in hindsight they were both fine and I would have been confident in their their seal so back on with uh, the exhaust, push that back up into place, I'm hitting the, the studs with a little bit of anti-seize because like I say exhaust manifold bolts can be really difficult if this will ease the, the process the next time around a little bit, I'm happy to do it putting a little bit on the oxygen centers for the same reason and then I'm uh, twisting up the harness counterclockwise a, a number of times uh, so that as I rotate it in it untwists the harness and there's no stress or strain on it. Tighten those all up calls for 31 foot-pounds that's a difficult place to get a torque wrench in so I'm doing what feels like tight enough without being crazy tight. Uh, there's a process here before you check the fluid level you need to cycle it through each of the park reverse neutral drive uh, low range positions for three seconds in each uh, gear with your foot on the brake and then you're going to do converter stalls to get the temperature up to where you need it to be for an accurate fluid check so you set the park brake put your foot on the brake put it in drive 10 seconds on 10 seconds off several times and watch the temperature climb at 158, the thermal bypass valve is completely open, uh, but the target temp is 167 to 176 because of fluid expansion for making sure you got an accurate level check. I got it up to 180, which gave me a little bit of time to get down here and let it cool a few degrees, which it's scalding hot um, and it's horrible placement. Uh, so watch out for that exhaust pipe and the fluid itself is really hot. So you want to let that drain until it's a drip. Um, I actually put this drain plug in maybe a little early. It still had a little bit of a stream. Uh, you just want to go from a stream to a drip. And if you're not getting any fluid flow out of that, you would need to add fluid until you get um, a light drip from that hole. And then you have an accurate level. Um, and then uh, shut off the vehicle, finish putting everything back together put in the inner fender liner, forgot to put the heat shield on, so I had to go in and do that. Torque the tires to 140 foot-pounds, and she's all done. I hope you found this useful. I appreciate you watching. Hope you like and subscribe.